Hello, my name is Dal Thornton. I'm with Garmin International. Uh, today we're going to do a webinar on the EchoMap Ultra user interface. Uh, and I'm going to go over some tips and tricks of the units for you. Like always, if you have any questions, please email marine.training at garmin.com and we will get back to you in a timely manner. All right, so let's get going. So first things I want to look at um, when we're talking about the EchoMap Ultras are the two models. So we basically have a 10-inch and a 12-inch EchoMap unit. So both models are available with or without uh, mapping, and that includes Blue Chart G3 and US Lakeview G3. So you can buy the units with or without mapping. If you see a unit with base map, that basically means it has a base map of the whole world in it, but no detail. Both units are also available with or without a transducer. So if you have a unit, most of you guys are going to be buying the 106 or the 126. That, those units are the 10 and 12 inch with cartography built in and with the GT54 transducer. But if you choose to add a second unit to your boat, there's no need to buy a unit with a transducer or with mapping built in. So you can go with the 102 or the uh, 12 122 and then that will network with your unit and they will share your mapping and your charts so looking at the echo map ultra some of the key features of the units they're again both 10 and a 12 inch ips display with wide viewing angle uh basically what that means is that um they can be seen basically at any angle when you're looking at them on the boat they're sunlight readable as well as polarized glasses you can see perfectly when, when wearing them. Uh, they are touchscreen with keyed assist, built-in cartography. So again, the, the, the Ultra 106 and 126 comes with Blue Chart G3 mapping built in, that's coastal US, as well as the Lakeview G3 maps, which cover 17,000 lakes, of which 13,000 have one foot contours. Uh, the Echo Map Ultras also have a feature called Auto Guidance built in, and that's something I'll go over in a few slides down. They both series are network uh, compatible, so uh, they're networkable together and with other Echo Map units via the Ethernet port. Uh, and that's for sharing the sonar and the map screen as well as waypoints. Um, the units are also NEMA 2000 capable, so if you do want to run your engine data, or a autopilot or anything NEMA 2000, these units can read it. Uh, the units also have Wi-Fi built in. That's pretty standard practice now with Garmin, and that's for use with the Active Captain app. So just a, a, a quick screen here to kind of tell you where the Echo Map Ultra series uh, is in, the, in our family of products. Uh, it fits very nicely between the Echo Map HD, the seven and nine inch, and the GPS Map series at 8600s. A lot of people looking at the Echo Map HD, the seven and nine inch units, they wanted a bigger unit. So again, we now have the Echo Map Ultra 10 and 12. But we added some features uh, that were only found in our GPS Map series. Uh, again, uh, one, one portion of that is the auto guidance built in. Okay, uh, so that was a, that is included in the GPS Map series, but it's not included in the Echo Map HD series. Um, so one thing I do want to point out that if you're looking, if you have not purchased an Echo Map Ultra unit yet, just remember none of the Echo Maps have the ability or are compatible with radar or XM weather. So if you're looking to make a purchase and maybe six months from now, a year from now, you want to add radar to the boat or XM weather, you do not want to go with an Echo Map product. You want to step up to the GPS map family. Um, they are not, echo maps are not radar or weather compatible. Uh, also, if you already have a GPS map series on your boat and you're looking to add a second station, echo maps will only talk with the echo map family. Uh, GPS maps will only talk with the GPS map family. So don't buy an echo map wanting to hook it up to a GPS map family. Uh, it will not work. So let's take a look at the back of the unit. So when you're looking at the back of the Echo Map Ultra series, the 10 and the 12, they both come with a quick 
quick release cradle. And again, we're, we're the only ones that do a quick release cradle in a 10 and 12 inch unit. This is one of the most popular features in our echo map family. Uh, the first, uh, the first, uh, uh, port on the back, the red port that is for your power port. So you're going to just plug your power cord into that, uh, red on positive, black on negative, and you're going to get power to the unit. Uh, the orange port, that is our 12 pin sonar port. That is where the GT54 or any of the other all in one scanning transducers from Garmin, that's where that port, that plug would go. It would plug straight into that port. Um, the yellow port right next to it, that is for our new live scope, the LVS 12. So I want to make this perfectly clear. I've had a lot of people call me up and ask me this question. The only transducer that will plug into this port is the LVS 12. You cannot plug the uh, Panoptics LVS 32. That is a transducer and black box combo. That plugs into the network port. It will not plug into the yellow port. Only the LVS 12 live scope will plug into that port. All right. We also have a port for NEMA 2000, like I stated before, that is for engine data. Uh, if you're hooking autopilots or, or anything, anything in NEMA 2000 related, we can read it. And then again, you could see we have two network ports. Uh, unlike the Echo Map series, the Echo Map HD or Echo Map Plus, um, they have a single network port. These have dual network ports. So it's very simple to plug uh, Live Scope, the LVS 32 into one, and then we have an extra port open so we can share it with another unit. So let's look at the quick release cradle. Again, this is the only 10 and 12 inch unit on the market that has a quick release cradle. And there's a couple of steps you, you wanna make sure you do when you're removing and placing the unit onto the cradle. The first one is the latching mechanism. Just make sure you're pushing the button in on the top of that latch. And when you're, when you're releasing it, you need to push the button in, pull the latch up, and then you can take the unit off. Uh, it's more crucial when you're putting the unit back on the display. There's basically a channel at the bottom of that cradle that fits uh, the bottom of the uh, Echomap Ultra. Make sure the unit is firmly into the cradle, into that channel, then you need to push the button on the lever, lift it up. It needs to be in the up position before you can lock the unit down. Push the unit onto the cradle, then push the lever, push the, the, the lever down. That will lock it in. Please do not force um, the Echo Map Ultras onto the cradles. We have seen times where people do not push the lever in and they just slam it in there and they basically are basically uh, you're basically bending the pins on the back of the unit okay uh, or actually on the back of the cradle so make sure you're doing it properly also when you remove the cradle please the unit from the cradle my apologies please use the uh the weatherproof cap that that's included in the box that will cover the uh, uh pins so when the unit is not on the cradle you won't have any water intrusion so let's take a look at some of the features of the unit. And the first, first feature I want to talk about is the power button. So yes, it does turn the unit on and off, but uh, the power button does a few other things that a lot of people don't know. Uh, if you touch the power button for a second, you're basically going to get this screen that pops up. So you're going to be able to engage autopilot here, engage circles if you have an autopilot hooked up. Uh, you can adjust the backlight. So for me, when I'm in direct sunlight, I like to hit that backlight and turn it all the way up. Uh, color mode is the next one you can hit. So if you're, if you're, um, you can, you can set this for day, night or, uh, um, uh, or night light. Um, lock touchscreen. Lock touchscreen is pretty important. If, if you're ever on the boat and it starts to rain or for some reason something's hitting the screen, even your buddy, if he's touching the screen, you don't want him to touch the screen. You can actually hit hit lock touchscreen. The unit will still function. You'll still be able to see your sonar, your GPS, everything like that. But you can touch the screen and nothing will happen. If you hit the power button one time and hit unlock touchscreen, then you can go about uh, entering waypoints or changing the screen. Um, the other two, the media bar will appear as well. If you have a fusion stereo or a compatible stereo hooked up to NEMA 2000, you can actually con control the, the stereo through uh, this this bar right here, and last but not least, disable all sonars. Uh, I like to like to make sure people know about this 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 uh, button right here because if you're on your boat at home or 
uh, maybe putting some waypoints in or working on your boat at night. You want to go into the unit and check some stuff out. Make sure you're turning that sonars off. And this is where you can hit the power button, go to disable all sonars, and turn your sonars off. Uh, we don't like those transducers to be ran out of the water. Um, again, you can run them for a short period of time, but they are subject to being damaged if they're left out running. So again, turn your transducers off, and this is an easy way to do it. Hit the power button, go down to disable all sonars, and that will stop all the sonar transmissions, okay? Another portion of the power button is sleep mode. So um, if you hold the power button down for a few seconds, maybe like two or three seconds, this bottom menu will appear, which you see on the very bottom, the power options. So here you have the option of sleep display. So if you go into sleep display, that will actually turn that unit off. Basically, it'll put it into a sleep mode. So if you're fishing at the front of the boat, a lot of times the bass guys don't want that back back unit working. Uh, they may be uh, trying to conserve power. They don't want to hear that transducer in the back. So pinging. So you can hit the button, go to sleep display, and it'll put the unit in the sleep mode. All right. Then once you jump back, you put your life jacket on, you sit back down. All you have to do is hit that power button one time and it'll wake the unit back up. It doesn't turn the unit off. Again, it puts it in sleep mode. Uh, you can, if you continue to hold that button down, turn the system off. Um, um, that, that's, that's an easy thing to do as well. Uh, but again, just by touching the power button for one second, you'll get to that first menu I talked about. If you hold that power button down for a few seconds, this menu will pop up and then you can have your sleep, sleep display, turn off system, or you can cancel. Okay. So the first thing I want you guys to do when you set your units up out of the box is I want you to go into your GPS. And when we ship these units in, um, WAS and GLONASS are basically turned off in the units. Uh, WAS only works in the United States. It's a set of, of, of uh, land-based towers that calculates the offset put in by the GPS, and it gives you better accuracy. So um, when you have this turned on, you're going to be less than three meters accuracy on your chart plotter. So to do this, I want you to go to Home, Settings, System, GPS. And once you're on that, I want you to turn the WAS on, okay? You need three fixed three satellites to get a fixed position when you're trying to lock onto a, uh, um, get a fixed position, I'm sorry. Uh, so this will just give you better accuracy. The other one you can turn on is the GLONASS one. The GLONASS is the Russian satellite system. And um, so that's an extra number of satellites that you're tracking. This, if, if you're in open water, this may not do anything for you, but you, if you if you're in a valley or up a river where you got a mountains above you, around you, or a tree canopy over you, this is just going to give you extra satellites uh, for the unit to acquire. Let's talk about the built-in cartography. So the EchoMap Ultras feature built-in Blue Chart G3 and Lakeview G3. Unlike the EchoMap Plus or the EchoMap UHD models. You purchase those units uh, with either coastal or offshore mapping. When you step up to the Echo Map Ultra, you're basically getting both. You're getting the coastal charting G3 mapping as well as the Lakeview G3 mapping. As I mentioned before, this does include auto guidance. This was actually on a $400 part of a $400 uh, chip you'd have to buy previously. We've now included it into the GPS map series as well as the Echo Map Ultra series, and I'll go over that next couple of slides. Uh, the units do have dual SD card slots. Um, one would definitely be used for active captain. Uh, you need to keep a blank 32 gig or less class 10 SD card needs to be installed in the unit at all times for the active captain portion uh, to work as well as the quick draw features I'm gonna talk about. Um, one thing I do wanna make a note is that when you're connecting to another Echo Map unit, so let's say you have an Echo Map Ultra on the boat now, and you may want to add a second station. Remember, Echo Maps will talk to Echo Maps. Well, they will share mapping. The only issue is that when you have an Echo Map Ultra, because it has mapping built in, coastal and, and inland mapping, you need to add a unit that doesn't have mapping. So if you're going to add an Echo Map UHD, you would want to go with a 72. The 72 has no mapping. Okay. The 73 would have inland mapping and the 74 would have coastal mapping. If you hook a 73 Echo Map 
UHD 73 or uh, 74 up to an Echo Map Ultra, you cannot share mapping. If you hook an Echo Map Ultra up to a 72 that has no mapping, just the base map, you can share that mapping over. So if you do go that option, buy a unit that doesn't have the transducer because you're going to share the sonar, and buy a unit with no mapping. That way you can use the mapping out of the Echo Map Ultra over. So let's talk about quick draw. So um, quick draw is a part of the Active Captain app. What quick draw does is that most of these units, all the units uh, have basically mapping built in. But maybe you're on a lake or a pond or <clears throat> where I live down in Florida where, where uh, the storms go by and they change the contours of the bottom. Uh, <clears throat> I, I want to actually make my own mapping. So as long as your sonar is reading the bottom, you have the ability to use quick draw contours. And what you do, you go into any of your chart screens and you hit your menu. Then you go to quick draw contours and hit start recording. And when you hit start recording, it's going to pop up on your screen. You're going to see your boat in the middle of the screen and that little green circle is going to be around the boat. And as it drives, it's going to basically draw, build one foot mapping. Again, if your transducer is reading the bottom, um, you're drawing and building your own mapping. If this circle was green, that means it's recording the bottom. If it turns red, that means you're going too fast. You're not recording the bottom and you need to slow down. Make sure the circle around the boat is green. And as you drive the boat, you're recording. I keep mine on all the time. I'm constantly building new mapping. Uh, so uh, I would advise that. You can also share this. So let's take a step back. This is actually being stored on that blank SD card you're going to have in your chart plotter. Okay, that 32 gig class 10 uh, SD card. That's where this information is stored. It's not storing onto the unit itself. So you have the ability through Active Captain to upload all that data into the Quick Draw community and download it. So if you pull up Quick Draw community and maybe you go to a lake and you see a bunch of little red dots on the map, that means someone's already uploaded Quick Draw community in there. And now you can download it into your unit for free. So that's called quick draw. All of our units do it from the four inch Echo Map unit, Echo Map Plus unit, all the way up. So let's talk about the auto guidance. I, I know I, I may mention of this a couple of slides earlier. So again, this was previously in what we called a vision card, and it is still part of the vision card, uh, but we've actually added it into the Echo Map Ultras. So basically, normally on a GPS, if you want to mark a position, you tap the screen, and no matter if it's over land or if maybe there's something in front of you, uh, it's going to, the GPS is going to give you a straight line, A to B. Well, with auto guidance, you can go into your unit, tell your unit how much water your boat needs. So I need about three feet of water in my boat and how high you need it. So if you guys are going up under any railroad trussels or any bridges, low bridges, maybe, you know, I usually set mine about five to six feet. So I, It'll, it'll allow me to go up under those type of structures. So then on your unit, all you need to do is go to your map page. You can tap anywhere on the water, okay? Then hit navigate to. You're gonna see a feature after that says auto guide. So click on auto guide and then hit start navigation. And what that's gonna do, that's gonna give you the safest route based on those parameters we talked about earlier, your water depth and your max height you need to get to that destination, okay? Uh, if you have a Garmin Autopilot, it'll then ask you if you wanna engage a Garmin Autopilot and our Autopilot will follow that, 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 uh, that route. Also, if you're using a force trolling motor, the force trolling motor will follow that as well. So, um, if you, if you decide to exit out of there, you have the ability to save that route. Um, you can also hit adjust path, and then you can actually go up, a little cursor will pop up on that magenta line, and then you can actually drag that line out to a little, maybe you need a little deeper water going around this point right here. And uh, you can actually click on that, drag it out, and it'll adjust that path for you. So a lot of our, uh, our tournament guys are using auto guidance to estimate the ETA back to weigh in. So if you're up in a creek and you're fishing, you may see all the other boats leaving because they have to be back at the dock at four and they don't know how long it's going to take them. You can actually tap on the boat ramp and it'll give you your correct shortest path and your ETA back to that ramp. So you may be able to fish 15 to 20 minutes longer because you know exactly what time you're going to get back there. 
That's all our guidance. Well worth it. Combo pages. So all of our units, we have the ability to build custom auto auto uh, build custom combo pages. My apologies. Um, the units come with a couple of base uh, combos built in, but it's pretty simple on a Garmin to to build a combo page. So when you're on a combo when you're on the combo page, you can hit your customize button. Then we want to add. Once you hit add, you're going to have a function layout, and you can build up to a four combo page. So I'm going to select two for the presentation, and then you're going to see both left and right side of the screen shows empty. So all you need to do is tap on one screen size, and then you're going to then you're going to select charts, panoptic, sonar, autopilot. Uh, so if you select charts, then you will add charts to the left side of the screen. Then you would repeat the process. You tap on the right side of the screen. The box is going to pop up. Maybe you want to hit sonar. Hit sonar. It's going to ask you if you want side view, down view, clear view, um, or uh, traditional. You can select that. Make sure once you do that, you hit the done button. If you do not hit the done button, all, everything we just did does not get saved. Okay. Also, if you want to go back in there and change it, you go through the same process. You go get into that menu, get into that combo, hit menu, configure, configure combo. Then you can edit the combo. Then again, you go back, tap the function you want to edit. Um, the box will pop up. It says sonar, charge, panoptic, autopilot. You can add what you want. Uh, you can also resize it. So this little uh, four arrows right here will pop up in the center and you can actually just touch the arrow and drag it up and now that screen will actually adjust in size so you can adjust it any way you want okay that's how you make a combo in the echo map ultras so the shortcut keys so this is something that uh the echo map ultras have they have and the echo map plus the seven nine and the echo map uhds as well um they you have basically uh four keys that you can basically customize so if you have a certain combo screen or a certain screen you like to use a lot uh once you're on that screen hold the number one two three or four down and then you can save that as a pre under your pre-programmed numbers so um you know it's just kind of like in, in you know your car stereo if you have certain radio stations set at one two three four you can set custom screens at one two three four again when you're on that screen just hold the screen hold the number one two three or four down and it'll save it under that uh shortcut key so waypoints so there's three ways in a garment ultra to mark your waypoints okay pretty easy the first way is to um touch anywhere on the screen once you tap the screen uh, it's going to ask you a little box is going to pop up on the right hand side it's going to ask you if you want to create a waypoint right here uh, the next way is you can go to your uh, hit your menu button and go to waypoints and tracks this is where you can mark a waypoint uh, you can use the chart or use the current position on the screen so if your buddy gave you a bunch of waypoints uh, uh, this is where you can go in go to your menu hit waypoints and tracks and then you can enter the coordinates that he gave you okay remember you can always hit the mark key when you hit the mark key on the unit that marks exactly where the boat is okay so maybe what i like to do if i'm in a strange uh strange uh lake that i don't know the area and i back down the boat ramp i always hit the mark key right when i crank the boat up and that marks the position exactly where i am so i know ex at least i can get back to the to the ramp um, third way is you can actually rewind your sonar so if you're on your sonar screen that's clear view side view or traditional sonar you can swipe the screen don't tap it if you tap the screen nothing happens swipe the screen and cross these crosshairs will pop up you can actually rewind the sonar back a couple of screens about a minute worth of data you can rewind so maybe you you missed some structure you can actually swipe the screen rewind the sonar put the cursor on that structure and you can hit that little icon in the top right corner and that will mark exactly where that crosshair is okay so three ways uh to mark waypoints there so depth range shading this is a feature that a lot of guys are using now um i use it when i'm trolling mainly uh, maybe i have my trolling baits out at 10 feet 
you know, 20 feet, 30 feet and 40 feet. And all of a sudden my 20 foot, my 20 foot line keeps going off. Well, that again tells me that nothing's nothing shallow and nothing's hitting deeper. So what I can do, I can actually shade in the water depth just in that maybe, maybe 15 to 25 range. So I know I want to troll just that area. So when you're on your map screen, any of your map screens, you go to menu, then you hit your layers, water, depth shading. Once you select depth shading, this screen's going to pop up. So you can add a new depth, depth shading here. Um, and then you have a choice of colors. So again, if, if I know my baits are hitting around, you know, 20, 25 feet of water, I can go in here and select instead of 25 to 40, I may change that to shade in red, you know, 15 to 25. Then I can only troll, or I would only troll that red area. That's where all the strikes are. Uh, again, if you notice you're running, you're, you're, you're throwing a jerk bait or you're throwing something that's a suspended bait and hey, you're getting hits in 10 feet of water or 15 feet of water, you can shade in that lake just 15 feet. Uh, so maybe you want to do 14 to 16 in green. Now you know exactly where to go if those baits are, or if those fish are hovering in that uh, thermocline or, or that temperature break or some, some reason those fish are, are hovering in that area. Heading line and angle markers. So let's talk about the heading line. Um, the heading line is a cool little feature. Uh, it, it's an extension of the front of the boat. Basically what it does, it draws a line out from the bow of the boat in front of you and you pick how far out you want it to go. Uh, this is really good when I'm fishing or I'm coming up to maybe a piece of structure or my waypoint. I like to drop my baits out, you know, like 100 to 200 feet before I get to those, the, that, that structure. Or if I know their structure I want to make a cast to, Hey, I know I can cast about 80 or 100 feet, so I want to know when the boat's about 80 to 100 feet to that structure so I can make my cast. So if you go into any of your chart menus, again, hit your menu, layers, my vessel, heading line, you're actually going to see uh, this box pops up. And I've got the distance set on this one at 100 feet. And you can see in front of the boat, each one of those hashtags are 50 feet. So that's a hundred foot heading line. So now if I'm trolling up to an area, I know, hey, I'm almost at a hundred feet. I need to get those baits out or I need to get my uh, unit on anchor lock, my trolling motor on anchor lock and I can make that cast because I'm about a hundred feet out. This also helps me if I know if I drift off that area, uh, if my anchor lock comes undone or for some reason I drift off that spot, uh, I can look back and go, oh, hey, I'm, I'm more than 100 feet off this spot. I need to need to get back on the trolling motor. So that is heading line. Let's talk about sonar and transducers for a minute. So the Echo Map Ultras have built-in UHD, high-def uh, sonar. This basically, the units come with a GT54 UHD transducer in the box. Uh, that gives you uh, ultra-high-def side view and clear view as well as um, traditional sonar. Uh, the units also support panoptics. I know we spoke earlier about the LVS-12. Uh, that, that transducer plugs into the yellow port or the LVS-32, which we all know and love. Uh, that's the black box panoptics that plugged into the network port. Um, sometimes, you know, again, it's based on everybody has a different situation. Sometimes, um, I know with my boat when, and, and a bass boat especially, when you're running at high speeds, a transom out transducer doesn't read read well. Sometimes it, it won't read at all. So a lot of guys are going to an in-haul transducer and then a scanning transducer on the back. They're using that in-haul transducer for their running transducer. And then when they're fishing, they're using that side view and clear view on the back. So if you choose to go this option, uh, and, and you know who you are. You know if that transducer is not. You know that transducer is not going to work on the transom of the boat. You may want to first opt for a unit without the transducer because you're going to have to do something a little different. And then you're probably going to have to go with this last option: add a Y cable and either a GT8 or GT15 with a GT30 or GT34 transom mount. So. The GT8 is an in-hole transducer, and the GT15 is an in-hole transducer as well, but you actually glue a trim ring down 
then you fill that trim ring up with mineral oil or antifreeze, and then you, you lock the uh, transducer into it so it kind of floats. Most guys are opting for the GT8. That's what a lot of the bass boat dealers are actually installing from the factory, a GT8. That glues straight down into the bottom of the boat. But if you go this route, you will have to use the Y cable, and you will have to go with the GT30 or 34 as your transducers. And I'm showing this on this slide. Basically, um, the blue star is basically a GT54, so that's what comes on the boat. Comes in the box with the uh, Echo Map Ultra, so that'll that'll go straight on the transom of the boat. But again, a lot of times on a transom of a boat, it it really has nothing to do with the transducer. I don't care what manufacturer. It has to do with the boat performance and the chimes and the amount of dirty water coming off the bottom of the boat. So a lot of guys are opting to go with the GT8 high wide transom mount. That will glue down in the hull. You would have to add the Y cable, and then you would add the GT34 or GT30 on the back. That Those two transducers will do side view as well as clear view, okay? So this is the only option that'll work with the Y cable. So for the freshwater guys, you can only use with the Y cable the GT8 or the GT15 that has traditional sonar, and the only options you have, the only choices you have, is the GT34 or the GT30. Those do not have traditional sonars in them, so you're not doubling up on the sonars and causing interference. So the GT30 is good for deeper water. So if you guys fish over 35 feet, 40 feet, I would opt for the GT30. If you're less than 35 feet, a good transducer would be the GT34. The saltwater guys out there that are using the sonar, the Echo Map uh, Ultra, you can add in replace of the GT8, you can add the Garmin B60 bronze through hull transducer. Sorry, I didn't have time to put a part number up here, but you can call Garmin and we can, um, we can help you out there. But a B60 would work with the GT34 or GT30 combo. So sonar sourcing. So what's going to happen if you do have to go the second option, the GT8 or the B60 with the, G, uh, with the, uh, the GT34, GT30? Sometimes when you plug this unit in with the Y cable, the, the unit won't recognize the transducers. So it's looking for the GT34. So you may have to go in here and actually source and let the unit find your transducers, but it's pretty simple to do. Um, you can go to your any of your sonar menus, okay? Go to your menu. Go to Sonar Setup, then go to Installation, and you won't see this if you don't have a transducer hooked up. So once you ha hook, hook up your transducer, you can go through this menu. Installation, Transducer Models, and then collect, so, select, sorry, Change Model. And what that does is it's going to pop up a list of all the transducer combos that we offer. So you would scroll down. Here's a GT8 high wide plus the GT34. I would click on that, and all of a sudden those transducers should start firing off. Okay, pretty easy thing to do. Just remember, you can always contact Garmin at our 1-800-800-1020 if you have any questions. So let's talk about sonar real quick. Traditional sonar, side view, or clear view. Remember, everything you see on a sonar screen, you've already gone over. It's behind the boat, okay? So how a sonar works. Traditional sonar, you've got a cone going down. So the deeper you go, the wider that cone, okay? So if I'm in, you know, uh, 20 feet of water, I may be looking at a three-foot cone across the bottom. But if I'm in 200 feet of water, I could be looking at a 100-foot cone across the bottom. So remember, when you see the, an arch or a chevron or a fish, when you see the beginning of that fish on the screen, he's entered the cone. The highest point of that fish or chevron, the highest point of that arch, he's in the center line of that cone, that transducer. And when you see the tail end or the very last spot of that chevron or fish, that means he's gone through the cone. So what does that tell me? When you see the fish on the screen right here, He's already gone through that cone and he's behind the boat. How deep is he? I don't know. What side of the boat is he on, left or right? I don't know. But, so what I want you guys to do is remember, you guys all have a feature called A-scope. So to turn your A-scope on, you go into your traditional sonar. And again, this only works in the traditional sonar screen. You go to Setup, Appearance, A-scope, and turn it on. And then what you're going to have is this little sliver on the right-hand side of the screen right here, okay? 
What that t is telling you is that when you see a fish or anything in this portion of the screen, it is directly in the center line of that boat. I'm sorry, the center line of that transducer, okay? It's directly up under the transducer. When you see it on the screen uh, right here, when you see that structure or that fish on the screen right here, you've already gone over it. It's already gone through that cone. I couldn't tell you where it is, but when you see it in here, um, you are directly on top of it, okay? The other nice thing that, that this screen tells me is that the bottom, 209, that is telling me how wide that cone angle is at the, on the very bottom. So remember, the deeper you go, the wider that cone. Again, in 364 feet of water, this cone is 209 feet across, okay? So this is very important information. So it lets me know how far I may be off from those fish or that structure. Split zoom. So this is a feature that, um, that we added in the echo map series. It's not in the GPS map series at this time. So from the sonar screen, I want you to hit um, traditional sonar screen, hit your menu, no zoom, and then go to split zoom and turn it on. What this is going to do is split your screen in half. You're, so on the right-hand side, you're going to get your full, uh, full depth in the water column, and then you've got your split zoom on the left-hand side. The biggest thing I want to tell you is the cone angle that you see right here. This will pop up and tells, it tells me that I'm shooting a 24-degree cone down. And you can actually go into your menu, go into your frequency, and change that. When you go back to the screen, you're, you're, you'll see your different cone angles. But this is telling me, again, in 375 feet of water, I'm looking at a 95-foot span across the bottom. Okay, this is huge. It's great data you need to have, especially if you're bottom fishing. So that's called split zoom. Um, another feature of the Echo Map Ultra series is the on screen control. So you can do this with our sonar screen as well as the panoptic screen. So if you go to um, go to your sonar screen, hit menu, sonar setup, on screen control, you can turn your the range on or the brightness. If you guys like to change the brightness on your screen quite a, quite a bit, and I do like to do that in clear view and side view, uh, the brightness really helps bring the shadows up on the on the chart plotter. Um, uh, I like to do that. When I'm on my panoptics, I like to change that to um, to gain. So I'm constantly adjusting my gain on panoptics. So I'm clearing it up, adding gain, subtracting gain. So that's something you definitely want to mess with. If you're using panoptics, you want to constantly be changing that gain. Okay. So now this has been added as an on-screen control. There you go, on-screen range or brightness. So magnified zoom. So this is a new feature that we came out with uh, last year. And this gets me to a point. I've been to a several boats that don't have this feature. That means you guys aren't doing your sonar, your software updates. So please, we do software updates four to five times a year to fix. They, we add features, fix problems, enhance our sonar. So please do your sonar updates. You can do them on an SD card or if you have the Active Captain app. That's why we have the Active Captain port Wi-Fi is built into the unit and the Active Captain features to do your wife to do your software updates. So please do your software updates. So magnified zoom is pretty cool. So when you're on your traditional sonar, and this works with side view, clear view, panoptics, as well as traditional sonar, click on your zoom and then click on magnify. And when you click on magnify, this box is going to pop up on the screen. Now that's going to allow you to pinch that box and you can zoom in and out with your fingers and you can drag that box across the bottom to see structure. Maybe you went over something, you think there's a couple of fish submerged on it or suspended on top of it. You can actually pinch the zoom, open this box up instead of making your whole screen magnify. Cause I, I always like to see what's in the water column. Okay. I don't really like to zoom in on the bottom because then I lose maybe fish at, you know, uh, 20 or 30 feet down, but I can magnify zoom, put this box on the bottom corner and I can see anything that that's hovering off the bottom. Really cool feature. You need to take advantage of a uh, menu bar. This kind of last thing I'm going to go over is a menu bar. So on all, all of our units, you have the ability to add data bars, uh, to the screen. So it's pretty simple to do. So when you're on your, on any screen, any screen, sonar screen, especially with the Echo Map Ultras, if you want to add, I'm going to show an example of adding the trolley motor bar. But if I add this bar to 
the chart page, I'm going to have to do the same thing on the sonar page if I want to see my trolling motor bar on my sonar page. So when you're on your page, uh, select menu, edit overlays, and I you can add it to the top or the bottom. Um, I'm going to add it to the top, and then you have an option, the trolling motor bar, a media bar, and that's to control your stereo if you have a Fusion or a compatible stereo that works with Garmin, or you can put a compass tape. Um, but for this example, I'm going to use trolling motor bar. Once I select that, the trolling motor bar now pops up on the top of the screen. So now I have full control of the force trolling motor and only the force trolling motor. So I can put it on anchor lock. I can move it left and right. I can engage it. Uh, I can check my battery status. So again, um, this is adding a menu bar to my chart screen. I would have to go through the same, same steps if I want to add this to a sonar screen or any screen. Okay. Well, that's it for me. I know this was pretty quick. Hopefully, it was helpful for you guys. Please, if you have any questions, uh, please send an email to marine.training at garmin.com. Uh, if you have any technical questions you need help with, you can also call 1-800-800-1020. Uh, please uh, send comments. Uh, any, anything else you guys want to go over, any other future webinars, uh, please let us know. Thank you very much.